Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm gonna be painting some flowers from this beautiful bouquet that my husband got me for Valentine's Day. I can't let these real life flowers go to waste, so I'm gonna pick out some and I'm gonna try and paint them while looking at them. All right, let's jump into the video. Okay, so for today's video, I'm just gonna be picking out three flowers that I wanna try and paint from the bouquet. And the first one I'm gonna pick is this chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum, right? Chrysanthemum. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful flower. It's more difficult than I usually go for because of all those petals. So I'm gonna make it fairly loose, but I really wanted to take the opportunity to paint by using a real flower as a reference. And for this one, I'm gonna try and use this flat wash brush. So I'm gonna be starting to try more flowers with different shaped brushes in the near future. We're gonna be selling some of the Craftimo um, brushes from the subscription boxes separately, which I will let you guys know of soon. So I wanna try and do a bit more tutorials playing with different brushes. So for this one, I really wanted to try a flat wash brush. So I just created this similar color in my palette with some Windsor Blue and some Permanent Rose, and I'm just gonna use the brush on its side to create these small, thin petals, and I'm gonna leave some white space in between. Now, like I said, I've, I feel like this is a more difficult flower to paint because there are so many individual petals, and that's why I'm kind of going for this more uh, loose look. And I feel when you're painting a flower that has so many small individual petals, you really have to rely on using different values of colors um, and white space. So I did change the color of the flower slightly. I added a bit more pink and then I added a bit more blue just so I have a variation of different colors within it. And that just itself creates separation in between the petals. So when you're doing a loose flower that has lots of petals like this one, it can be really easy to create kind of this blob shape, right? So that's when you really have to add a lot more white space, not a significant amount where you have these big holes, but little white pieces of white space throughout and then changing up the values and even the hues of the colors. So you can have more sections that have a bit more um, pink in, into it or some more blue and it's a darker purple. And then right towards that center, I tried to do a lighter value so it was a bit lighter towards the center like it is on the flower. And you just gotta play around. Now, this is not a flower I typically do. I don't have a lot of experience with painting this flower because I have found it so difficult in the past. So today I'm just playing. You're you're actually just watching me play and try new flowers with uh, a new brush that I haven't used for florals before and just kind of experimenting. And I feel like this practice is so important for people who have just started painting, but also for people who have been painting for a long time. You're not gonna know how to do everything and Trying new things is so important in the practice. Now, the way the flower ends up, it's not it's not bad and it's not totally great. I do like it, but I feel like there's so much room for improvement. So you're just watching me learn today and you can kind of learn along with me. So if you have a flat wash brush, I definitely try suggest trying it because it's completely different because you can create these thinner lines um, and more geometric shapes. So I just use the side of the brush for these thinner lines and I'm also going to try and create some leaves and the reason why I also wanted to try and use this brush is because you can create these kind of off set leaves and if you look at the leaves on the chrysanthemum they're very sharp and kind of jagged and they're not traditional like you know soft leaf shapes they're kind of funky looking so I thought that this brush would be really fun to try that with so get out some sort of brush that you've never used before and give it a try. Also, I follow along with um, Jillian Boone from The Crafty Fox. If you're not following her on Instagram, you definitely should. I'll put her link below. And she also has a YouTube channel that she's just started uh, adding more videos to. And she uses a flat brush and we actually have collaborated together and I've taken one of her workshops that she did for my Patreon. Um, and she uses a flat wash and it's kind of opened my eye to trying brushes with florals, like new brushes with florals. So this is kind of inspired by her. Um, definitely want to give her credit. Definitely want to get you to check her out because she's incredible at what she does. And yeah, this is kind of just me experimenting. I actually kind of like the way the leaves turned out with this. They're kind of wonky and, and fun. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think about this flower specifically. So this is kind of just what I do. I feel like looking at it back, because I'm just, I'm doing a voiceover. I don't know if you can tell. Um, 
I feel like I could have done the petals a little bit better, left a bit more white space. It's a bit dense in some areas, um, but it's definitely a, another flower to practice at another time for sure. And I really like using this brush. Okay. So the next flower I decided to paint from the bouquet is this Lysianthus. Um, it looks a little bit like a rose. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the rose family, but it looks similar to it. So I decided to try and paint it and I'm going to try and do the stalk of it with the little two buds at the top and the bigger flower bloom towards the center with the leaves. And for this, I'm going to try and use my filbert brush. I think this is my size six filbert. And I just kind of wanted to give it a try again using a new brush that I'm not as familiar with and just giving it a go. Okay. So I'm just going to use the flat part of it to kind of try and do these like little rounded um, C curves. Now it's a little bit harder with this brush to do those smaller C curves. And I don't know if this is the right brush to use for this, but I just wanted to give it a try and see if I could do it. So I'm just doing these little C curves going around using the flat side and then the thinner side just by turning it. And again, I feel like I could have used a little bit more white space just to separate those petals a bit more. Like you can still see some of the separation, but again, it's something I feel like I could have worked a little bit better on and maybe elongating some of those petals. I feel like they're a little bit too short of a C curve shape, but that's just my own criticism <laughs> for it. So I'm just, I continue going around, just trying to shape it in a similar way. And the color I used was uh, dioxy, dioxazine purple and then a little bit of Windsor blue. And then I'm just gonna try and do the stem. I just add a little bit of that purpley blue to my green. And I do a little bit of a green part at the bottom. They have these little kind of, I don't even know what those are called. You know, little spiky bits towards the bottom of the flower. And then I'm going to just do the stem. So again, one reason why I love painting flowers from an actual flower that you have with you is that you can kind of see the anatomy of a flower. And if you have enough of them, you can kind of, I hate to say this, but tear them apart and see how they work and see how the petals connect. See, you know, it's just so much better than a reference photo because you can really kind of get the whole picture of how the flower works and where parts come from. You can twist it and turn it and just see how those little stems connect to each other and how the base of the flower connects to the bottom of the petals and you can open it up and see the inside and see that stamen, how it looks and how it all connects together. So I think it's really important that if you do have fresh flowers available to you in your house that you kind of just like really experiment and get to know them, take them apart, see all the parts of the flower and then I feel like you'll have a bit of a better idea on how to paint them. Okay, so I'm just painting leaves with my filbert brush and it's actually quite easy to do. You can get the same kind of shape that you would with a round brush with a filbert brush. I'm just turning it on its side and then I just do the same kind of light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure stroke, which is great. And then I'm going to do the little buds at the top. There's two on this one. So I'm just using the flat side and I'm just creating these small little C curve shapes to create a small bud with this light green. I add a little bit of yellow to my green because it's a lot lighter. And then I'm gonna do a bigger one on this side. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that purple because one of the buds had started to turn the purple color. So I'm just dropping a little bit of that color into the bud. Now, now while I'm dropping that color in, I wanna make sure that I'm not moving my brush around too much where it's gonna be mixing the purple and the green because then it will just kind of become this greenish, grayish, purplish color. So I'm just dropping it in just to get a slight hint of that purple. And then I take a slightly darker green and I'm just doing the little part that kind of encases the bud there just so you get a bit of contrast between the light bud and then the darker um, bits around it. Then I'm just going to grab a small amount of yellow for the center of the Lysianthus. <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to grab a little bit more of my purple and just do a little bit darker petals going around. I don't know if I love this choice, but I did it. <laughs> and I just wanted to try and get a variety of the light and the dark, but it still doesn't look exactly how I wanted it, but it was, it was a good try. It was a good try. And then the little bits of the purple on the buds. Okay, 
So lastly, I'm just taking a little bit more green and I'm just adding some darkness to the base of some of the leaves just for a little bit, I don't know, more depth <laughs> or just like a variety in within the leaves just so it's not all light. You have a little bit of darkness in there too. And that's pretty much it for this flower. So the last flower I decided to do from this bouquet is this wax flower filler, which I love. Um, they're so cute and so tiny. So I thought I'd give this one a try. I just love all the little details on this um, and they're just fun to do. So for this flower, I actually decided to use a small size two filbert, which is actually pretty perfect for this flower because it has that rounded petal shape uh, tip already. So they're pretty easy to create with this brush. And I'm just using a really light wash of pink to start. And I'm just doing five little petals, leaving white space in the middle because I'll do the center later. And I'm just kind of doing them just randomly and then I'll connect them with a stem after. I'm creating some that are just like a slightly tilted perspective by doing the three uh, petals facing one way and then the two petals at the bottom just a bit flatter and that just changes the perspective of the flower. So just kind of giving it uh, different angles and just doing a little cluster and I'll also be doing a couple little buds and the buds are just like one stroke with the tip of that brush which is really helpful. So you'll see me do that in just a sec. So there's like a side view of like three petals. And then I'll do some buds after. Then I just grabbed a light wash of burnt umber to do the initial stem. So I'm just using the side of the brush, just using the really thin part to do the stem. And then I'm gonna try and connect some of the flowers off of the stem, but using green. So I'm just kind of doing the initial brown stem. And then you'll see, I'm not connecting all of them just yet. I'm gonna use a bit of green. And the green is what's connecting it. And they're just kind of branching off of each other. Really lightly. And then those ones at the top where you see the side view, I'm just making it a little bit like almost like little tiny triangles coming off of it and then connecting a little stem right there. Now it's still looking pretty sparse, so I will add some more. Um, but the wax flower has these little green, I don't even think they're leaves. They almost remind me of like little pine needles or something kind of coming off of the stem. So I'm just going to do a bunch of those using the side thin part of the brush, just going down the stem. So now I'm just adding some bottom green parts to some of the places where I'm going to add some buds. So I'm just doing almost like a little circle with the tip of my brush. I'm going to wash it off. I'm going to grab a little bit of that pink and I'm just going to do a little circle top on top of the buds. It's just like the ones that haven't bloomed yet. Super easy. Grab a little bit of green and then just add some stems connecting to those. Then I'm going to add a center to all of my flowers and I just use like kind of like a reddish pink for the center, a little bit of yellow in there for a bit of orangey tint. And I'm just creating a little tiny center, a little bit of darkness on some of those side petals. Now, because it's looking a little bit sparse over to the side, I'm just going to add a few more flowers, maybe some buds, uh, just to kind of make it a little bit fuller. And then the last bit of this flower, all I'm doing is just with a really tiny detail brush, I'm just adding a couple yellow um, dots for the center parts of the stamen. And I'm just using my cadmium yellow, which is pretty opaque, so it layers over nicely. And that's about it. So there are my versions of the flowers from my Valentine's Day bouquet. I hope you guys learned something. These are things that I'm definitely gonna practice myself in the future with different size brushes and shapes. And I think that's about it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a great day, guys. Bye.